The team at Razer Studios has been hard at work at Automobilista 2. I've been taking a look at the sim on and off over the past six months or so, and it seems like every other week there's a new update or something coming out for it. Definitely keeps you busy, and it's been progressing, I think, in a really positive direction uh, over that time span. So the latest thing to be released is the first part, I think, of three parts of the Racing USA uh, update. And this is a DLC pay for pack that contains a few few tracks from the United States finally coming in to the United States with some tracks and then also uh, some GT and prototype cars basically to simulate the IMSA series and I do like the tracks that they picked they're three tracks that fit obviously very well with this IMSA sports car series they've added and unfortunately none of them have vintage versions uh, but I can hold out hope for that and they do say that they're going to be releasing some alternate versions of these circuits Daytona curiously doesn't come with an oval version but there's nothing really in automobile to two to race on an oval at this stage and it's got me thinking with this three-part u.s pack that's coming out for automobilista and with rise's studio uh having done classic type formula one cars in the past they have the great formula retro fictional type cars that model cars from different time periods for formula one and i would absolutely die if they did something like this for indycar i think indycar is all but confirmed at least a fictionalized type of indycar to be added to automobile Belista 2. I think it's all but confirmed uh, for the sim. And my God, it would be awesome if they added some classic Indy cars in there. I could imagine uh, a, a 70s, 80s, 90s Indy car going so well into the sim, especially if they grow the U.S. track uh, selection, which I think they're going to be. If they add a few ovals, obviously Daytona wouldn't be a good one for it. But man, it's just got me thinking and kind of excited. And so when I downloaded this pack, I wanted to try out some of the tracks. And Long Beach has been a long favorite of mine. And although this isn't a historic layout, I think I actually prefer the modern layout of Long Beach over any of the older layouts. The, I just talked about the 90s layout of Long Beach uh, Racing IndyCar 2, and that is a great layout, fast laps, uh, great circuit, but I think adding in the little fountain section that they have these days only adds to the track overall, and I do love the up and downhill section that the Formula 1 track had, but I, I don't really feel like I'm missing too much by not having that. So Long Beach in my book has always been a pretty solid track, and it's so much fun to lap pretty much any car around here. It's a street track, so it's pretty difficult uh, but I've been having a ton of fun racing here in some of the older formula cars again. But for the past couple of days, I've been racing with the Lotus 72, which is one of the included cars that's been in Automobilista 2 for quite a long time. Uh, and I wanted to try out this car specifically because it's one in the past that suffered quite a lot from this weird understeering problem that the physics seem to have. But happy to report, feels somewhat mitigated, it still understeers a bit. I feel like I could do more with the setup to dial things out, but the car is absolutely drivable now. And in the past, it was pretty hard, especially around slower corners. Lotus 72, of course, is one of the most famous Formula One cars. It could take the cake as the best Formula One car of all time, simply for how long it was competitive. The car was introduced in 1970 and took Formula One by storm. Jochen Rint drove to four victories in a row from the Dutch Grand Prix through the German Grand Prix, and of course, unfortunately died in qualifying at Monza because of a crash. Emerson Fittipaldi swept in and won the United States Grand Prix just two races later, uh, and of course, Jochen Rint won the World Drivers' Championship posthumously. Uh, no wins in 1971, but then in 1972, Lotus was back with a few updates to the existing chassis, and Emerson Fittipaldi, I believe, went on and won five more races that season. 1973, Emerson Fittipaldi and Ronnie Peterson won, I think, seven races and finished on the podium, at least one of them, almost every single race. Of course, winning the Constructor Championship again. Uh, and the car remained competitive in 74 as well, with some further updates, tweaks to it with Ronnie Peterson and winning another three races there. And in 1975, the team once again ran the car. I believe they tried to introduce the Lotus 76 uh, in 1975, but it didn't quite work out. And so they went back to the trusty 72 and uh, didn't win any races that season. I believe Jackie Ix got a second place at the Spanish Grand Prix. But for six seasons, five seasons with wins, uh, the Lotus 72 was the Formula One car to have. And you can see how other cars on the grid were influenced and evolved because of the Lotus 72. I think the 
the McLaren 23, one of the most prominent, pretty much based on the design of the 72, and that car obviously went on to do great things at the hand of Emerson Fittipaldi. So this is a super fun car to slide around Long Beach, and that's what I want to do. This is for nothing else other than fun. I think the sim is a lot of fun. It's really easy to pick up a race uh, and simply add some cars onto a track that you want to drive, and it all seems to work quite well. The AI seem to be getting better and better. In the patch notes, uh, Rice has said they've done some things to the AI, uh, and they continue to impress me. A lot of fun racing, but I'm going to do 10 laps here at Long Beach, starting from the back, see how far up the grid I can get, uh, hopefully survive without hitting the wall or anything like that. All right, so here we are on the grid. So far back, I can't even see the lights. But green's out, we're underway. Oh, I'm trying to accelerate away onto Shoreline Drive. We'll come to the lazy right-hander up to fourth gear. H pattern, of course, will come down towards the first corner. Oh, car in front, hitting the wall a little bit. We'll break, maybe see if I can slide up the inside. Down to first gear, we'll slide him behind this Brabham here. It's come too wide now. Towards <laughs> towards the Fallon corner. Almost coming to a complete stop there as everybody tries to work their way through in the opening lap. Honestly, not that unrealistic. All right, try to accelerate out, just control all the horsepower in this thing. The rear end just wants to get away from you if you stab it too much. But now we'll come out onto Shoreline Drive again, headed the other direction, side by side with the McLaren. Drag race now, we'll come up to the corner. Oh, he squeezes me out towards the wall, second gear. It's quite a long corner, so I can slide the car there. I got loose, almost clipping the tires on the outside. First gear then, set it up for the back straightaway. All right, able to get out from side by side with that McLaren now. Accelerate down, stuck in behind. I think it's a Brabham in front of me. Oh, come towards the end of the lap, down to second gear, but he's still quite tentative. I think these are some of the slower cars. Put it in first gear through the parking lot. Let's see if I can come around the outside now up to the hairpin. You don't want to do that thing where you <laughs> make contact with the car on the outside and cause a huge traffic jam. I feel like I saw that so many times with the old kart races here. Ah, but complete lap number one. Always hectic, but made up oh, seven spots, so not too bad. We'll focus forward, see what I can get out of this short race. Down a second gear for the first corner again. We're missing the apex a little bit there. Down a first then, through the fountain, quite slow. Still caught in behind the cars. I got one right behind me, too. If you can get a good exit here, I can set myself up for the next corner. Oh, there we go, side by side. It's going to get a little bit of better of a run than me, but let's see if I can throw it up the inside here. Wheel to wheel, right to the walls. I love the way this track switches back and forth. <laughs> and the AI race you so aggressively, yet clean. They do hit you once in a while if you do something dumb. Get caught up there, don't get on the accelerator quick enough. gear. Should be able to get around this car. There we go. Sneaking up the inside of the hairpin. Nothing you can do about that. Run him right out to the wall on the exit. Accelerate away. So Long Beach, of course, in its inaugural running, was an F5000 race, I think for a couple years. And so these cars, obviously Formula One, a bit different, but especially aesthetically, visually, they fit that F5000 type look of the mid 70s that is so, so cool. And of course, this is not the older version of the track, but like I said in the intro, I quite like this version of it. And if it wasn't for the billboards, you could really fool yourself into thinking this is vintage Long Beach, which is more than enough for me. Accelerate away. Maybe the roller coaster is a little out of place, but it's still a ton of fun. Absolutely muscle the car around. You can see some understeer there. There's still a bit of understeer on turn in. And I don't know if that's the setup or what. I've tried fooling around with the setup quite a bit as I close right up on these guys. Get up to fourth gear. So if I can help break them a little bit, come into the corner. Oh, can I get both? <laughs> throw it in there, Whoa, ride the curbs, almost cut the corner. I think that was another low 
a 72 as well that I passed. Just chalk it up to team orders. Got him right in my left mirror there, fifth gear. Seems like he got a little bit of a slipstream on me. Come down to the first corner, trying to break later. Oh, I lost him. Where is he? He's still there. Give him a little bit of space, but cut him off. Should be able to keep it. Close right up on the car behind. Just grab as much curb as you can around the fountain without mowing the flowers. Keep it in first gear this time. You can get away with second gear there on your own. Oh, a great exit. But no grip on the right side of the track. Did the old switcheroo here up the inside. Have to give him space there on the outside. steer a bit onto the back straight away. <laughs> Tank slapper with the car. We're side by side, I think, but I should be able to help break them up here. There we go. Down a second. Understeer over the apex again, so it's on corner entry. I've tried playing with the differential, too, because it feels like it might be a differential thing with the coast, but just can't get the car to turn in like I'd want it to. On exit, it's beautiful, though. 15th, not too bad from the back of the grid around a track as tight as this. We're only on lap five. Obeying the line rule into turn one. I don't know if you can pass that line to the right, but everybody seems to be staying on the left side of it. Such a good run out of there, even even though I'm sideways. There we go, up the inside once again, favorite spot. Just dance the wheel in your hands. Oh, try to. Oh, how do we make it through there side by side? I can't even talk. Just trying to stay in front of these guys. There we go. Get another one though, up to 14th now. I think the whole racing world took notice of the epic battle this year with Jean Alesi and the Ferrari and Lotus at Monaco for the historic Grand Prix. And you can actually race Monaco in Automobilista too, so you could recreate something like that quite easily. But with Long Beach, I get that same type of feeling that I'm just hustling a car around a street circuit and danger is imminent. The walls are close. At any point, the race could be ruined. And it really can. If you tap the wall, the suspension goes all out of whack. If you hit the front or the back, the wings get damaged and it really does damage the car. It may not visually look like it. The damage model visually is not super great, but or it's no worse than most sims. But physics-wise, you really have to pay attention to not get damaged. They've done a ton of updating to the sim beyond the big obvious things with new tracks. There's all new weather data that you can actually run races with historical weather, which is pretty wild. There's also the championship feature, which I've been waiting for for a long time, so you can put together a little bit of a tank slapper there. Catch it, though. Meant to do that. But you can put together your own custom championships now, which really should have been something I feel like you would have at day one, but it's finally in here. So, I mean, if nothing else, Ryza certainly puts the effort in to just continually update it, and it's absolutely getting better and better, and it's a ton of fun. This is so easy to set up as well. I maybe I did maybe one of these races in full earlier, just to test out settings and things, and let me tell you, to get other sims to a playable point, I spent so much time working on AI and getting different tracks, and it's just a, fresh, a breath of fresh air to just download something, select what I want, and go. And I think that's what a lot of people want. Whoa. Catch the oversteer there. The steering wheel is merely a suggestion of where you want to go. I've closed up nicely on these guys. I just gotta 
see if there's a good place to get around too far back here to make a lunge. I'm gonna miss the apex as well. See if I can get a nice run onto the back straight away. Make this corner for once. Oh, right up to the wall. Didn't get the acceleration out of it that I wanted to, but I'm right on the rear wing. Car in front. Oh, and he tries to defend a little bit there. Squeezes me. So I'm just fade to the right slightly on the entry. All right, there we go. Around the outside, I'll take another one too. Just throw it on in there. Nothing you can do about it. to go then up to 12th can I get a top 10 out of it get three cars in front of me so should be possible to do oh cars in front hit the wall how are these two gonna make it through there it's two shadows and I keep I have to go fast because there's a car right behind me too certainly that would damage one of them most likely see a puncture in real life Accelerate out. Oh, sliding on the entry. You can see the tires in the bottom right. The tire progression, especially from cold to hot, is super important, I've found in the sim, which is kind of cool to see. You come out of the pits on cold tires. There we go, up the inside of the shadow. One of them, at least. Could have done that one too, but we'll just take one for now. Don't get greedy. Maybe I can get the second one here as I almost hit the wall to the right there somehow. A lot of oversteer. I didn't quite get this guy. He's going to take the line. All right, accelerate onto the front straight away. But yeah, you come out of the pits and practice with cold tires, and it really does take a couple laps where you really have to work the tires in, get them up to a temperature, and then you can really the pace which all sims should be doing but it just feels very natural in this one all right down to first gear right on the back of this other shadow shadow like really oh car behind me is right in my mirror too please don't throw it in i do wish you could see your own car in the rear view mirrors and i understand why that's technically a little harder you gotta draw stuff behind you but especially for tracks like this and when racing other cars it really helps place your car if you can see the rear wheels there and the car behind me right on me now he's gonna go up the inside onto the back straight away side by side here Let's try to accelerate the car's dancing on me second gear throw it on in keep the position all right we're coming up to the last lap so no more mr nice guy here take the inside just to get out of it behind me so i pick up another spot up to p10 got one more lap maybe i can get ninth out of it up to fifth gear Slide it on in around the fountain. Dangerously close to the walls there. A little bit hot, but nowhere really to pass here, luckily. Up shoreline now. Still have a shadow really close behind me here. Just need to be careful. He is really my shadow. Oh, so he's right there on the inside. On the outside those will come out of the back straight away so should have them yeah with the spot get good acceleration out of there could have run into the wall but still right on the rear wing of the car in front use all the revs i'll break him into the right hander oh under steering down to first gear use all the curbs on the inside into the hairpin for the final time. Oh, come to the line. Finishing ninth from 27th. Not too bad at all. Oh, man. 
hopefully <laughs> I feel like I couldn't talk as much as I normally would there. It's a lot of work racing a car around this track. Hopefully it was fun to watch, but it's absolutely awesome. Um, just like I said, it's so simple to set up. You can pick you know, cars at pretty much any track and they just seem to all work, which is so refreshing for a sim to race AI and have it be competitive like that. And uh, I've tried these at uh, Laguna Seca as well, which is one of the other new tracks. I was trying to decide whether or not I want to do Laguna Seca or Long Beach, and I thought Long Beach would be a little more exciting for a video, but uh, they're just as fun at Laguna Seca. So Automobile Institute keeps getting better and better, and uh, I'm glad I'm here for it. So I'll let this be my official letter to Ryza Studios. If you make a 90s, 80s, 70s, or even 2000s indie car, I will be so, so happy. I think uh, the tracks that they're coming out with now, if we get a couple ovals, especially ovals that an IndyCar would race on, uh, I think this would be a really fun sim to throw some older cars around. And I was thinking about it. I mean, there hasn't been a new sim that has come out with an old IndyCar in a very long time, if ever. There have always been mods and things. And so I think Automobilista 2 would be an awesome sim to have some retro IndyCar stuff, even if it's maybe not a real IndyCar, uh, more of the fictionalized version, like we have with some of the other cars uh, in this series. I'd be fine with that. You know, give me, give me a 1991 March or Lola type car, uh, and that would be perfect for me. So hope you enjoyed this. I might do some more Automobilista 2 because it's so much fun, uh, but just wanted to show off a neat combo and something that I was going to race anyway, so why not make a video? So thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time.